Node balancers are an awesome feature of the Linode platform that enable you to make your application highly available, and it also allows you to better handle maintenance as well. I mean, just think about it. Have you ever needed to take your Linode down because you needed to do updates or something like that? It would be a lot better to route your customers to a different Linode while you're working on the primary one. And when your business or your application gets crazy busy and becomes super popular, it also enables you to better handle traffic and load as well because a node balancer enables you to split your traffic among several different Linodes. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you how to create a node balancer and it's going to be awesome. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So here we are on the Linode dashboard and it's time to get started and create a node balancer. Now first of all, I've already created a Linode off camera. I have this one right here, NB Tutorial, and this is going to be the Linode that I am going to use as an example later in the video. But as you can see right here, it's a simple Ubuntu 2004 LTS Linode, so nothing too fancy there. Now if I go here to the Node Balancers section of the dashboard, you'll see that I actually don't have any node balancers currently. So let's go ahead and add one. So I'll click here to add a new one. And then we have this form right here, which will allow us to create our node balancer. We also see here on the right what the cost is going to be for the node balancer. So just keep an eye on that and make sure that it's within budget. So first of all, we need to give it a name and I'll just call it balancer 101. I think that's simple enough. And then down here when it comes to the region, I'll drop that down. I'll choose New Jersey right here. And then if I scroll down, we actually get some additional settings for our node balancer. And these are the settings that actually matter the most. First of all, we have a port. We want to know basically which port should the node balancer listen on and which protocol is it going to serve? And what is the algorithm for how it's going to route the traffic? As you see right here, it's defaulting to round robin. And then you also have options for session stickiness as well. So what I'm going to do is set this here to HTTP cookie. I'm going to leave the algorithm as round robin. That should be good enough. And then for the health check, I'm going to set that to HTTP status. I'll leave the default interval for five seconds. And the options here are fairly self-explanatory. So here it's actually going to check every five seconds. So you might want to change this if you are comfortable with a higher number of seconds when it comes to the timeout. Here it's going to determine how many attempts it's going to make before it actually takes a node out of the rotation. So the idea is a node will be considered to be unhealthy if it doesn't match all of this criteria. Now here it's asking us to set the HTTP path. And I'm just going to use a single forward slash for that because I don't have any other pages on the server that I'm going to use that matters. So this is good enough for it to just check the root. And the backend nodes, I can go ahead and click right here. And the label for the node that I'm going to use as an example is NB hyphen example, just like that. And then you do need private networking enabled here. So as you can see, I don't actually have that. So what I'm going to do is open Linodes in another tab. And then we have the Linode right here that I intend to use under networking. I'm going to click add private IPv4. I'm going to click allocate. And now we have the private address right here. This is not accessible outside of the Linode network, so to speak. This is basically an IP address that is considered to be private, much in the same way as your IPs are private behind your router or firewall for your internet connection. So now we have that requirement met. And I'll just paste that in right here. And there we go. I'll click create. So now we have our node balancer. It's created and it's ready to go. Now we don't have any stats available at this time that should fill in later on. And right now it's telling us that we have one down. And the reason why it's down is because it's failing the health check. Why is it failing the health check? Because, well, 
I don't actually have any web server installed on this Linode at all whatsoever. So if I was to copy the public IP address of the Linode, for example, and then paste it in right here, it's never going to work. So what I can do instead is SSH into that particular Linode and paste in the IP address and then press enter. You can go ahead and install a web server of some kind in order to facilitate the need that there is actually something listening on port 80 so it no longer fails that health check. So what I'll do is run apt install nginx just like that and I'll press enter and then enter to install nginx as well as its dependencies. And then we can check the status of nginx. You can see that it's actually running, so if I go back to the browser, and let's just try to refresh this here. Uh, yes, it does show Apache 2 right here for the default web page, but that's only because I was using this same Linode for a different tutorial that did use Apache. And even though we've installed Nginx, it reused the same site files that were left over from the previous install. But the point is, there is actually something listening on port 80, so that requirement of the node balancer is now met. As you can see right here, we are now showing a graph, but there's no activity because there's not a whole lot going on here. We can see that it's still marked down. Now another thing that you should do is add the private IP address to the host file of the server that you want to be accessible through the node balancer. So here we have that server and this is the private IP address. I'll copy that and go down here to my terminal. And let's edit the Etsy host file. And I'm going to add another line right here. Let's paste in that IP address and I'll just call it localhost. It's just that simple. So go ahead and save that file and close out and then we'll go back to the dashboard. And now that we've added that IP address, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and reboot the server. Just make sure that the new private IP address is fully recognized. And then as soon as it comes back up, this should change to one up, zero down to show that this is actually working. And here you go. It now shows one up and zero down. I didn't even have to refresh the page. That's pretty cool. So let's test it out. Let's grab the IP address right here of our node balancer. Let's throw that in a new tab. Press enter. So as you can see right here, our node balancer served the default web page that is actually hosted on the example Linode that I have set up, which means that, well, it's actually working. So make sure you check out the documentation page that matches this video, especially if you want to see an example of pointing a domain to your node balancer, which is something you would definitely want to do if you have a domain name configured. But as you can see, the node balancer is working and that's awesome. As you just saw, node balancers are very easy to create. And in this video, we not only set up a node balancer, we also assigned a Linode to the node balancer. And we'll get full benefit from the node balancer if we have more Linodes that can handle the traffic. So we have more instances to route traffic between. But I think what we've gone over in this video will more than get you started with using node balancers. I hope this was a helpful video. As always, make sure you click that subscribe button because we have some awesome content coming. And click that like button as well to let YouTube know that you want to see more Linux content just like this. As always, thank you so much for watching.